Pretty awesome view, isn't it? What you can't tell though is that it's really, really cold. So BMW Malaysia has flown myself and a few others halfway across the world, across Europe, just to check out the new car. Sounds crazy, isn't it? Not quite though, because this car is rather significant. It's quite special and I'm about to show you. This is a car that is going to change the way we see BMW. It's a car that BMW deems to be their new entry-level four-door sedan. A car that can finally bring the fight to the Mercedes CLA. A car that is going to break conventions and everything we know about BMW because this car, not only is it available with all-wheel drive, but unlike all the traditional BMW sedans that we've seen, this one is going to be front-wheel drive. This is the new BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe. So as you can see in the background here, there's a whole lot of 2 Series Grand Coupes lined up and the ones that will be available for us to drive is the M235i xDrive, the 220D and the 218i. So for all intents and purposes, I'm going to be paying more attention on the front-wheel drive models because uh, assuming if it does come to Malaysia, those are the models that will be the bread and butter for BMW Malaysia. Alright then guys, uh, starting out with the 218i, this one is equipped with the new generation of uh, 3 cylinder engines, a 1.5 litre engine pushing out 140 horsepower and impressively about 220 newton meters of torque, 0 to 100 you're looking at about 8 seconds and uh, so far first impressions really smooth, performance wise adequate, sufficient. We just got out of the urban area from the city centre in uh, Lisbon, Portugal. We're on the highway now, heading towards a surfer town. It's going to be about a 100 kilometre drive, uh, split between two drivers, so I'm only going to be able to spend about 50 kilometres in this car. So, won't be able to tell you much, but first impressions, it's been good so far. We've just hit the highway, uh, doing about 100 kilometres an hour now. Speed limit is about 120. Insulation is actually really good. I mean, considering it's a uh, position that's an entry-level four-door sedan, it does not feel entry-level at all. In fact, the seat controls, plenty of seat controls. Glad to finally see lumbar support being offered. Right, so we just pulled out of a toll. Gonna give it a bit of a squeeze. Wow, it pulls quite strongly actually. 220 Newton meters of torque may not sound like much, especially when you consider that a CRV makes more, but it felt sufficient to get the car up and going without much effort. If no one told you, you probably wouldn't even realize it's just a 1.5. And what really impressed me is the fact that it's the lack of vibration. I through the steering here, I felt absolutely nothing, to be honest. And I'm firm, my foot was firm on the floor. Even so, with the engine revs climbing and all, you could barely hear anything. It's as if there was barely any struggle. And uh, speaking of uh, being in this position, I'm not sure. I didn't get to ask the uh, designer of, the, of this new car yesterday. But it does seem like they've made this cabin a whole lot more driver oriented with the uh, aircon controls and all tilted a lot more towards the driver. It might look a bit distorted at first glance but once you get into this position, once you start driving it actually feels very driver focused, everything is within reach. Alright, I'm going to be a little naughty and push the envelope a bit. Already doing 160, 170, very effortlessly. Wow. Wow. Almost mind-boggling how empty the highways are. And this is, bear in mind, peak hour, 9 a.m. It should be full of traffic, 
I would imagine, I mean, not as uh, congested as our federal highway and all that, but this, like my drive partner said, is almost like a ghost town. I mean, you can check out the footages. It's, there's only one car in front of me. I've not seen more than 10 cars on this highway and uh, it's, it's actually quite eerie, actually. Yeah. But anyways, back to the car. Um, like I said before, it's 218i and the 220d. Uh, for example, is that it's front-wheel driven. Front-wheel driven BMW. Can you imagine that? I mean, growing up with BMW, to even fathom, to accept that this uh, BMW has finally come up with a front-wheel drive model, it did take a while to get used to. It did take a while to accept. But uh, since we're on the highways, honestly, I can't tell you the difference. It, it does not feel like a front-wheel drive vehicle. It does not, I mean, it does not feel any different from your traditional BMWs. I really, uh, I was told that there's going to be a lot of uh, B roads once we uh, exit the highway. So I think that's when the characteristic of the car would really, really show. Front wheel drive BMWs. For two kilometers. This navigation lady is really getting on my nerves, I tell you. Like, uh, she really likes to interrupt. Huh? Man, how many tolls have we passed yeah, already? Yeah, exactly. You thought Malaysia has so many tolls, right? Yeah, so like from the start of our journey, I think we're only about 10 to 15 kilometers into our 100 kilometer journey. We have gone through about three tolls already. I think uh, one was about 150 euros, the other one was about 50 cents euros. Now I see why the highway is so empty. BMW actually said, according to surveys, a lot of their customers do not care whether the car is front wheel driven, rear wheel driven, they do not care. And uh, as disappointing as it is for me, because I mean, don't mind me, I'm a bit old school, uh, it's quite sad actually, especially when you're buying a BMW and you don't care if it's rear wheel drive. That's, that's actually quite sad, knowing yeah, that yeah, the new generation is going in that direction. Which is exactly why BMW created this 2 Series Grand Coupe. This car is not so much, I mean, it's still uh, a car with dynamic driving performance and all that. The same amount of focus has been given to the aesthetics and also features. For example, now you get Android Auto with this car, wireless as well. Something I found really annoying in BMWs because the Apple CarPlay, you need to connect uh, with the wire and all that. I mean, young people, wires and all that, they want it to be immediate, quick, responsive, get into the car straight, I'm connected, I got my favourite uh, songs playing on Spotify, and I think this car with the kind of direction that BMW has adopted, with the sportiness, with the bold character lines, uh, the really dynamic uh, features, the really sharp, slim uh, characteristics of the uh, headlamps, the tail lamps, I think it works, I honestly think it will work. The only thing that would fail this car, uh, speaking from the Malaysian market point of view, is the pricing. Uh, my guess is that it wouldn't come straight away as a CKD, instead as a CBU, and uh, oh, not sure what this car would be priced. But uh, it shouldn't be any higher than a 3 Series, I'm guessing, because this is, like I said earlier, supposed to be the new entry level four door sedan so fingers crossed I guess so I've just turned off the highway now onto some smaller roads a lot more winding roads uh, straight away the front wheel drive 218i has revealed itself so to speak the, there's definitely a lot more load on the steering uh, like I said earlier considering it has to power the car now to drive the wheels while turning at the same time, it Please definitely feels a lot different to compared to a rear-wheel driven uh, BMW. The steering is a tad lighter, you feel more drive force coming from the back. Turning the car in, like I said, there are a lot more layers to explore. Okay, which exit should I take? 12 o'clock. Alright, successfully completed my first roundabout. Uh, driving on the wrong side of the road tell you a little bit of a story uh, got to drive not in Lisbon uh, in Algarve 
the southern part of uh, Portugal when I was uh, studying in the UK went to uh, Alga for like a short trip rented a car for a day was on the wrong side of the uh, roundabout you're supposed to go anti-clockwise instead of clockwise like we do in Malaysia and my god did it frighten me when I realized it thank goodness there was no cars immediately took the next exit uh, there were some bystanders looking at me by the roadside completely amused baffled what in the world is this Asian chink doing on the wrong side of the road but uh, there we go nine o'clock second roundabout no fatality so far no locals screaming at me no one honking at me there second roundabout completed right so as we're going through a small town now it's uh, quite a good test of the car suspension and if you ask me the setup on this car reminds me a whole lot of the previous generation F30 it was a nice balance between comfort and sportiness and sharpness it's very unlike the new G20 330i I thought driving wise dynamics wise the car was really competent but when it came to absorbing the bumps I thought it was a bit too harsh for my liking but then again that's the sportier 330i model part of the drive the natural habitat of a BMW curvy B roads now the car is in its element everywhere you go there's just cyclists feels very front wheel drive actually very very front wheel drive there's still a bit of that BMW-ness to it in the in the way the car turns turns in and exits but very much like a front wheel drive this reminds me of a very well sorted front wheel drive vehicle it's actually quite fun it feels more assuring actually than driving a rear wheel drive vehicle i can almost chuck the car in this is uh, something new turning in with the throttle on yeah you definitely feel a lot more action going on in the front as opposed to you know the dynamics that you feel in the traditional bmw where you feel the back pushing in you feel the front turning in this one a lot more of it is happening in the front is it a bad thing Please no is it fun remains to be seen actually now i am actually enjoying myself and uh, i suppose like bmw said a lot of its customers actually don't care if their cars are front wheel drive or rear wheel drive so to a lot of y'all who really don't mind driving a front wheel drive bmw you're not anal that a bmw is not rear wheel drive I truly believe that you would have just as much fun driving this front wheel drive BMW in comparison with a rear wheel drive one in the urban area like that I, I see why BMW said what they said it honestly doesn't matter to me as well shit does that mean I've been converted oh, oh I gotta get home and drive my old BMW Hello. again the rear feels so sorted out that multi-link suspension definitely doing its job comparing it to the A-Class the CLA well I'm just gonna compare it with the A-Class for now with the torsion beam system it does feel a little hollow at the back can't really tell what's going on at the back not very communicative with this multi-link uh, rear axle there's a lot more engagement, you feel a lot more uh, feedback coming from the back. I'm having fun actually, I'm having fun. So this is how the outside of the 218i that we drove here in looks like. The front bumper especially looks quite similar to your standard 320i, 520i models that you get in Malaysia. While we have had a lot of complaints with the front grille, with the size and whatnot, it actually blends in quite well with the facade of the 218i, of the 2 Series Grand Coupe in general. No complaints there actually really like the sleek headlamps unlike the uh, 220d and the m235i models that we're going to drive later on heading back to lisbon 
uh, which comes with 18 inch and 19 inch wheels this one comes with 17 inch wheels moving on to the back you get less aggressive bumpers obviously because this is the standard model the 218i as you can see on the badge over there single exhaust less aggressive rear bumper you still get the diffuser there you have the 220d with the 18 inch wheels as you can see how different the uh, rear bumper looks like you got twin tail pipes as opposed to one so back to the 218i that we drove earlier uh remember the seats that i told you about with the combination of leather and fabric it actually looks really nice i mean most of y'all would prefer leather seats i'm okay with the seats being completely fabric but this is actually a very presentable combination and uh let's go through the features of the seats finally you have lumbar support over there and this one i really like the fact that you can control how tight you want the rib support to be this is how the interior looks like very driver centric especially with the uh, dashboard design everything seems to be revolving around the driver and this is the area that i was talking about correct me if i'm wrong but somehow it just feels more tilted towards the driver side otherwise most of the controls are fairly familiar in terms of their position you have the controls for the headlamps over here aircon controls infotainment system your center console with all the drive settings and whatnot and that's pretty much it as for the back seat now this is i'm sure the part of the car that you guys are most curious about because traditionally sedans with the coupe silhouette offer almost minimal head room and uh, while this one offers, I suppose, sufficient knee and leg room, again, at the end of the day, this is a compact car. The roof actually curves upwards a bit, freeing up a bit of head space. And just to give you an idea of what it looks like, just nice actually. About 180 centimeters tall. Uh, any taller and I think you might struggle or perhaps you have to lean forward a bit then again it's a compact car so there's really not much to expect out of this if I'm honest now these trims are continued from the front as you can see over there they're illuminated uh, something different something new compared to the current models that we have sufficient space but accessibility is quite limited if I'm honest and uh, personally, I've always preferred these handles to be covered. Quite convenient, additional storage space. The way the 2 Series Grand Coupe drives leaves plenty to be excited for when it comes to Malaysia. Although it remains to be seen how most would perceive its exterior styling. Guess we'll just have to wait and see.